Hey there, now we're gonna take a look at partial pressure, also known as Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. Here's one of the ways we can imagine it. Suppose I have a container, and in that container, I have five molecules. I'm gonna say that three of the molecules are argon, perhaps, and two of the molecules are xenon. How many molecules are there total? Five. If I said that the pressure in this container as total is gonna to be about two ATM, what fraction of the molecules are argon? That is, what fraction of the pressure is due to argon molecules? So I take a look here and I say that I have three argon molecules out of a total of five molecules which equals 0.6. This term here is known as the mole fraction of argon. I can say that the mole fraction is 0.6, or I can say that 60% of the molecules are argon. And what this means is 60% of the pressure is due to argon. So if I wanna find what's called the partial pressure of argon, I'm going to take that mole fraction, which is 0.6 or 0.60, and multiply by the total pressure of 2 atm. 0.6 times 2 atm gives me 1.2 atm. If I want to find the partial pressure of xenon, I'm going to find the mole fraction of xenon, which is 2 fifths, which is 0.4, and then I'm gonna take, this isn't equal, so um, 2 fifths, which equals 0.4, my mole fraction of neon is 0.4 or 40%. So if I want that partial pressure of xenon, I'm gonna take 0.4 and multiply it by the total pressure, and I get 0.8 atm. One thing you should notice here is if I take my individual partial pressures, they should add up to the total pressure. That is, the partial pressure of whatever gases I have in the container will always equal the total. So since I already knew that argon was 1.2 and the total was two, I could have solved by subtraction to get the partial pressure of xenon, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. We're gonna now take a look at another example where we're given grams of each thing to begin with and we'll take a look at how we handle that. Okay, for this problem here, we have 22 grams of CO2, 32 grams of oxygen, and 5.67 grams of NH3. Total pressure is 800 torr, we're gonna to find all partial pressures. Before I can find each partial pressure, I'm gonna to need to find the mole fraction of each, which means I need to find the moles of each. So 22 grams of CO2, I divide by CO2's molecular weight, which is 44, and that gives me 0.5 moles of CO2. 32 grams of oxygen, oxygen's diatomic, so the molecular weight is 32, gives me one mole of O2. 5.67 grams of NH3, I'm gonna divide by its molecular weight, which is 17. gives me 0.33 moles of NH3. I need to also know what my total moles are. So I'm gonna add up all of these, 0.5 plus one plus 0.33, and that gives me 1.83 moles total. So for CO2, if I want the mole fraction of CO2, I do its moles over the total, 0.5 divided by 1.83 gives me a mole fraction of 0.27. For O2, it's 1 over 1.83, which gives me 0.55 as my mole fraction. And for NH3, 
it'll be 0.33 over 1.83, giving me 0.18 as the mole fraction. I'm going to multiply those mole fractions times the total pressure. And we were told up here that the total pressure is 800 torr. So I'm going to use that to find the individual partial pressures. So for the partial pressure of CO2, it's mole fraction times total pressure. Partial pressure of O2 will be its mole fraction times total pressure. Partial pressure of NH3 will be its mole fraction times total pressure. So 0.27 times 800 gives me 216. Since the 800 was in TOR, this is also in TOR. 0.55 times 800, 440 TOR. 0.18 times 800 gives me 144 TOR. And those are my partial pressures of each gas.